Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Senator Mary Landrieu from the great state of Louisiana. And as chair of the Senate Homeland Security Committee Appropriations Subcommittee, I want to thank Colonel Edmondson for inviting me to speak with you. I wish I could be there in person, but my schedule just will not permit it. I also want to thank all of you for your service and dedication to protecting all of our communities, large and small, across the nation from the great threats that are presented to us every day. After the September 11 attack on our nation, the role of law enforcement changed forever, maximizing the benefits of information gathering and analysis between all levels of government was a primary recommendation of the 9-11 Commission and a requirement of the Homeland Security Act of 2002. Since then, we've created 78 state and local fusion centers that have been created across the country to specifically promote this important sharing of information and to maximize that gathering of information and analysis between state, local, and the federal government. Fusion centers receive tips about potential terrorism, crime, and suspicious activity from the public, local police agencies. They can then better coordinate and collaborate information with the FBI, DHS, and other federal agencies and other state and local entities. But this isn't just a one-way information channel. Fusion centers also receive threat intelligence from DHS, which is then pushed out to state and local law enforcement. In August, I got the chance to visit our fusion center in Baton Rouge to see this work firsthand and to see specific cases and how they were solved and how our work together was enhanced by the capabilities of this center. It's important to note that funding for these centers is a responsibility of state or local jurisdictions, but DHS state and local grant funding can be used to sustain operations. Since 2004, $551 million has been all allocated in support of our fusion centers. And in addition, Department of Homeland Security Office of Intelligence and Analysis has placed intelligence officers at fusion centers to help accommodate the flow of information and provide analytical support. But my work in the Senate extends far beyond advocating for fusion centers. As a member of the Appropriations Subcommittee on Commerce, Justice, and Science, I work very hard with colleagues to secure funding each year for the Byrne JAG grant, grant Program and the Byrne Criminal Justice Innovation Programs. These programs, as you know, help states and localities with funding to support your law enforcement efforts, prosecution and the courts, crime prevention, correction, drug treatment, and other important initiatives. But specifically, the Byrne Van Grant Criminal Innovation Program is a community-based strategy that prevents and controls violent crime, drug abuse, and gang activity that threaten the stability and safety of our communities. The program operates in designated high-crime neighborhoods by providing funding to support partnerships between law enforcement agencies and the community-based organizations that balance enforcement with data-driven prevention, intervention, and neighborhood restoration services that are so important. This program empowers and involves communities in building safer neighborhoods. I will continue to fight to make sure these grants are available to you. And lastly, I want to just mention something about our Youth Promise Act. It's a bill that I've introduced with several colleagues in the House and the Senate, and research shows that if we don't invest in prevention and intervention programs in the front end, we will never break the cycle of criminal justice involvement. That cradle to prison pipeline that is tragic, expensive, and not really in line with the American ways of opportunity and, uh, and future enhancement. What we need is a new approach to crime policy, one that is based on evidence and research, is proven outcomes, an approach that will effectively reduce crime and dismantle this cradle to prison pipeline. This act has many important initiatives. I want to commend it to you, look at it. I would love to have your support and your strong involvement. The faith-based community is stepping up, other community organizations, health and mental health agencies, the law enforcement community can be a great leader. Thank you so much for giving me this opportunity to speak about these important issues. 
take a look at the Youth Promise Act. Would love to have your help and support. And again, you can count on me uh, for my support of your continued and effective work to make our communities safer and to prevent threats both from within and from without our country. Thank you so much.